Hey guys, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I really do appreciate it. I was able to see the Netflix miniseries Lost Ollie a little bit early, and today I'm gonna give you my honest, no BS, non-spoiler review and tell you if it's worth a watch. But again, guys, remember this is only my personal opinion, so if you guys thought differently, or if you thought the same, leave your thoughts of Lost Ollie down in the comment section down below. I read every single comment, the good and the bad. I read every single one. Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, before we get started, I wanna tell you guys that I did not know that this was a limited series when I actually signed up to review Lost Ollie. I saw the trailer and I thought, you know what, that looks cute. That looks like Netflix's version of Toy Story. I thought it'd be cute, let's watch it. And then I was planning out my week, I'm gonna watch it on Monday night, review it on Tuesday, have it out for you guys on Wednesday. And then I saw that there were episodes and I'm like, oh boy. So if you guys know me at all, I'm not really a series person. I like my movies. I like my movies an hour and a half to, you know, three hours if it's an epic like Braveheart or Gladiator or things like that. I like my movies. Series, I don't know. It's just not really been my thing. But I was already committed to it and I watched all the episodes in one night. So I've seen a lot of Lost Ollie in the last 24 hours. So I'm going to review this like a long movie. So just keep that in mind when this review is going on. So we have director Peter Ramsey, who has directed such films as Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and Rise of the Guardians, directing most of the episodes in here. And it stars Jonathan Groff, Gina Rodriguez, Jake Johnson, Mary J. Blige, and Tim Blake Nelson. And just on a personal note, if you guys don't know this, I actually work for a film studio in Vancouver and we actually worked on this project. I delivered a lot of the film gear, a lot of the cameras, lights, stands for this series. And when watching it, I'm like, I know where that is. I know where that is. I know where that is. And you know how you can tell that this movie is filmed in Vancouver? Because the main kid, Billy, is played by an actor named Kessler Talbot. And anyone in Vancouver knows the name Kessler from the Vancouver Canucks forward, Ryan Kessler, who was a great player for the Vancouver Canucks hockey team in 2011 when Kessler was born. Funny enough though, he would ask to be traded three years later. That's why you never name your kid after an athlete. Now with all that out of the way, is Lost Ollie worth a watch today on Netflix? I'm gonna say no. And that's not because I don't like series. I think this really should have been an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minute movie. And I think there are some good elements in here, but there are four major problems in this series where I'm like, man, just this could have been a really great movie, but instead we just have a mediocre mini series. Those four problems are structure, tone, characters, and animation or rules of the world. I'm going to throw that into be like 4.1. So let's talk about structure. Number one. Now, like I said, this really shouldn't have been a mini series. I can see this as an hour and a half to hour and 45 minute movie. And the story or the structure of this series is that Ollie, this little tiny stuffed rabbit, is lost. He wakes up in a thrift store and he's helped by this clown named Zozo and they go off in an adventure based on his memories, which of course are the flashbacks to how Billy lost Ollie in the first place. And that's the adventure to get Ollie back home. That is basically the structure of this entire series. So that's fine, right? Sounds like a typical kid's story, but here are my problems with it. Number one is that it's a very slow start. We have Ollie in this thrift store and you have all the shenanigans with the dog who lives in the thrift store. And of course you have to meet Zozo and you have a lot of interaction between those two. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, if this entire story is about Ollie trying to get back home to his best friend, Billy, I wanna see Ollie and Billy as best friends. I wanna see their relationship. I wanna see their friendship. And you see it through little spurts throughout the entire series, but I really wanted that relationship to be really strong. I wanted to really feel that connection between the two of them and for me to think about the stuffed animals that I had as a kid. But we don't really get to see that at the beginning. And then when we finally see him get lost or taken away, and if we're invested in that relationship, then we're really emotionally involved. We're going, no, 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 we can't let this happen. We need to have these characters back together. But we don't really get a sense of that relationship at the beginning. Number two is that yes, this movie is a jumping back and forth type of story. You have the characters going off in an adventure based on Ollie's memories going, oh, I remember us at the hospital. His mom was sick. We had to go to the hospital and they go to the hospital and then there's more flashbacks. I do think this series would have worked chronologically. And the problem with that is that the flashbacks are way more engaging than the stuffed animal storyline in the present time. And we'll get into the characters in a minute. And number three is that it is very convenient that Ollie remembers all of these things that happened to him and Billy and his mom and his dad way back when, and then he is just able to find all these places within a certain mile radius, but he's going on trains and he's going on motorcycles, he's going on boats, and he's going through all of these really big modes of transportation. And I'm not really one to say like, oh, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense. Like my favorite movie is Star Wars, right? A little green alien has a lightsaber. 
like you know realism can be thrown out the window if done properly but in this movie the convenience really bothered me i didn't think that any of it was clever it's just oh there's a train let's get on it and let's just jump off and we're right at the place that we need to go that train that cart that time it just works out and i'm fine with coincidences happening in movies if they're done for laughs or if they're done you know with some kind of clever twist but here it's not done cleverly yep that's the word i'm going with cleverly and for for most of the series it is very rinse and repeat we have a flashback he remembers something he goes to another location they have some banter another flashback go to another location it's very rinse and repeat and i'm thinking to myself man this really could have been a movie it feels very wash rinse repeat over and over and over again and it's just drawing out the runtime we're not really learning anything new about the characters whereas if it was done chronologically you could have taken those moments out and really just crammed the movie in with the moments that actually matter and by the end of the fourth episode you actually see all of the beats pay off you see all the twists coming and you actually see it all wrapped up and i'm thinking to myself yeah chronologically i feel like all these moments would have really hit and that's where i'm thinking to myself yeah this is the third act of a one and a half hour movie so those are my problems with the structure second of all it's the tone now this story is about a lost toy trying to get back home to his best friend which is a young boy very winnie the pooh christopher robin you're never gonna forget me billy so when you think of a story like that you think that this movie or series is going to be targeted towards children and families right like we're on the same page with this one right but the tone I do not think matches that story and it's a weird mashup between indie music video and just very unnecessary violence and swearing both of those things i don't think mesh well together or lend themselves to this kind of a story now i believe that it was actually walt disney who said something like this that you can show a child anything on screen as long as it has a happy ending so when you think about all those early disney movies all those scary moments pinocchio snow white fantasia dumbo Bambi, right? They have a happy ending, even though there are some dark moments in those movies. And for the most part, the sad moments in this series actually work. The mom has some disease, the dad doesn't really know how to handle it, and he's very absent from Billy, and his dad is not the best at showing emotion. Bullies in this movie, and there's some jealous toys as well on Ollie's adventure. All of that stuff is fine. Really, it is. But what bothers me is that you can tell that this movie is really trying to force home that Toy Story 3 ending. That really sad sad, sappy, overdramatic type of emotion from the audience. And I'm just looking at it and going, I'm feeling very manipulated right now. I'm not feeling like this is really earned and you have like that really sappy indie music. I'm thinking like this feels just so manufactured. And then we get into the violence and the swearing. Now we have characters saying words like hell and damn and ass. And I can understand like bullies saying those words like, what are you doing jackass? Like I can get that. Even in a kid's movie though, it's a little strange, but we even have the toys saying it, right? Like Mary J. Blige plays like this super cool type of teddy bear and they're talking about buccaneers. And then she says, the only buccaneer I see is on your bucking head. And I'm just like, this just feels off but not as much as the violence. Now, minor spoiler, but there is some backstory with this clown, Zozo. He falls in love with this marionette puppet from across the way in this carnival. They fall in love, they have this really romantic evening, but then of course she gets sold to someone and he's looking for her. He finally escapes from this carnival and goes around looking for this doll and he ends up going to some Goodwill or some thrift store and he's talking with this little plush rhino. And when Zozo asks about the whereabouts of this doll, you can tell that the rhino thinks that he knows where it is. He's like, oh, I know where that is. There's a doll in the back of the store, but it turns out to be a Barbie. But then Zozo gets very, very angry and you start to hear some narration going, the pain in my heart's been too much missing you, Nina. The hurt in my soul has made me do some very, very terrible things and then you see him no joking you see him murder the rhino takes him out behind the store in the back alley in the rain dimly lit starts beating the crap out of this rhino and actually ripping the fluff out of him it's just straight up murder and i'm thinking to myself what in the world am i watching this tone is just completely out of nowhere really off now i can understand that of course he's really hurting and he has kind of the same backstory as Lotso from Toy Story 3. Like this movie has a lot of comparisons to Toy Story 3, obviously. And there's some dark moments in that movie, but man, do they just not know where that line is and it just feels like there's something wrong. Like there, you feel it. I'm watching this series and I'm just like, I feel really uncomfortable. So the tone in this series is just all over the place. Number three are the characters. 
Ollie is boring. I and mean, you know what's funny? Zozo even says in this series, well, you can't call him boring. Actually, Zozo, I can. He is a very boring character. He is determined. He is kind. He is sweet, naive, and he loves his friend, Billy. That's it. He doesn't really have a personality. He just wants to get home to Billy because he loves Billy. That's it. He really didn't win me over. And Zozo the Clown, he actually had the most backstory. He actually had the most interesting story arc, even if he turns into a violent murderer who just goes completely over the line and it really does come out of nowhere. And the bear Rosie, they really do not do anything for me. Their chemistry doesn't really work well together. There's no comic relief. The jokes don't really land. They don't really form a really great friendship. Nothing for me to really get invested into this adventure to get home. Billy, on the other hand, and most of the human characters, I found them to be way more engaging. Kessler Talbot as Billy, you know, great job. You see his arc with growing up and he's trying to fight those demons about, oh, I'm too old to play with those kitty toys. I'm getting bullied. I'm not a baby. I don't need to have this Ollie anymore, especially when his dad is saying, you know what? Maybe you should just leave Ollie at home. You know, I need you to grow up a little bit for me. And you see Billy really struggle with that. You know, I've gone through the same things. I know that a lot of other guys have. Gina Rodriguez as the mother was fantastic. She's sweet. She's upbeat. She's comforting. And you really see her struggle to be strong for Billy and her husband when she's actually going through all of these really severe health problems. She's a great character also. And Jake Johnson, they don't really explore his character too much, but there is something there too with him trying to be the best dad and not really showing his emotions and he's not really sure how to. So the human characters and the drama there, interesting. The stuffed animals, really boring. Really, I just could not be invested anytime that they were on screen. And finally, the animation and the rules of the world. So Ollie looks cute enough, right? He's just a little tiny rabbit made out of socks and some random fabric. He's a cute enough animal. However, I felt like there was a problem with the animation when they were escaping the thrift store. Zozo and Ollie are running away from this dog. And I just felt like the animation was really stiff. The camera was very still. The characters didn't really move very quickly. And they felt just like they had training wheels on, like they were being kind of like held back. And I feel like the animators were going for more of a realistic style, but these are stuffed animals coming to life. I feel like with the animation, you're allowed to go a bit more over the top with it. But once you go for realistic movements and realistic facial expressions with these stuffed animals, then there's really no excitement, there's no emotion, and there's no movement. And also with the rules of the world, we see these animals move and talk and interact with the world every time that they're on screen. We never see them go like, Andy's coming and then kind of play dead. We see them move all the time. However, we see the kids understand them and we see the kids interact with them, but only some can. Is it kind of like a Polar Express thing? Like you got to believe in them to really make them work? And most of the time the adults can't see them, but sometimes they can. And again, is it just because you have to believe in them for them to come to life? Or is it all in their imagination? Well, that doesn't work because the characters are actually going across the country, going across the state, the city, whatever the case may be, you see them interact with the environment. So they have to be real. And one thing that didn't really make sense to me is that they're running across a hallway and they're interacting with other kids and other animals and they're interacting with parts of the hospital, but the doctors are just walking and not noticing them. So the rules of this world are not really explained very well. And I can honestly go through all of my four problems, the structure, the tone, the characters, the rules of the world and the animation and point to Toy Story. Like Toy Story is the gold standard for a movie like this. And with this being a three and a half hour, nearly four hour mini series, I'm also thinking to myself, you know, kids have a pretty short attention span. Do you really think that a four episode miniseries is the best way to go? I'm really not too sure about that. So for an overall rating, I'm gonna give this series a two out of five because I do think that with some tweaks, I do think this could have been a really great movie, but as a series, I think there's a good first draft here but it just kind of needs some work. So those are my thoughts on Lost Ollie. I know that this review went pretty long because it is a limited series or mini series review. And I've never done one of those before. I've always done kind of like my thoughts on each episode for like Obi-Wan Kenobi or Mighty Ducks Game Changers. So again, guys, this is my first time doing something like this. So hopefully you guys bared with me to the end of this episode. So thank you so much for that. But let me know your thoughts of Lost Ollie down in the comment section down below. Hit like and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. Sweating, it's so hot outside. I've been talking for a long time. I'm done with Lost Ollie now. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.